Hi, I'm Lisa and welcome to my channel, The Southern Seamstress, where I share all about the garments I'm making, including my pattern and fabric selections and how I like the finished garment. In last week's video, I shared all about Spoonflower Fabrics, who they are, what they do, and also gave some tips on how to order from them. In today's video, I'd like to share some of the garments that I've made so far with my Spoonflower Fabrics. The first garment that I'd like to share is the t-shirt that I'm currently wearing. I spoke about this in my first video. It's McCall's M7600. It's a colored block t-shirt and I used Spoonflower's organic cotton knit to make it. The designer of the three prints was Angela Anderson. I made the size 8 and like I said I talked about this in my first video but I wasn't wearing it so I just wanted to show you how it looks. I'm 5'2 and I removed one inch out of this middle tier and also an inch from the last tier. So it's still fairly long. It has a high-low hem. It overlaps on this bottom tier. Anyway, I really like the fit of it. I think it turned out well. I think it would also turn out really well in maybe a more flowy uh, knit. This one has some flow, but it, it's, it's fairly thick. But I, I think the next time I make it, I will use a uh, lighter jersey to make it. The second shirt I made from Spoonflower Fabrics was the one I was wearing in my second video, and it's McCall's 7360. It was this little Henley shirt. It's made from Spoonflower's cotton lawn fabric. Uh, the designer was Cam Creative, and this print is called Mandel Color Mini. I had one person uh, ask me last week if I had any problems with this placket. And I was a little apprehensive about the placket because I had made a shirt that had a placket that stopped in the middle of the shirt. It, I've only made ones that went all the way down. Now mine is not 100% perfect, but I think it turned out just fine. In order to get the best results from this placket, I would suggest first transferring all the markings from the front of the shirt pattern to your fabric. Uh, it's got a little line right down here where you're going to stitch and these little dots are the bot over the bottom of the placket is and you're going to stitch and then stitch across and then when you sp you're going to make a cut all the way down the middle and then till you get to maybe about an inch before the dot and then you're going to cut diagonally into the dot and I think what I did was I didn't quite cut to the dot. So I think that created a slight pucker at the corner. And then your placket also pattern has markings and you especially want to mark this horizontal stitching line right down here because when you stitch each of your placket pieces onto the shirt after you've cut the shirt down the middle, um, you're going to overlap your two placket pieces and then you're going to be cutting across on that stitching line so you're going to want to know where it is and you want to make sure that these are overlapped on top of each other and everything is straight. But I think if you do that then your placket is going to look just fine and so I wouldn't let the placket keep you from making the shirt because I think it is a really really cute shirt. The next shirt I want to show you is the Terrific Tea by French Navy and I'm going to go put it on I'll be back in just a second. So I'm back in my Terrific Tea by French Navy. This t-shirt comes in sizes A through N. It has a bust size of 31 and a half inches to 59 and a half inches. The waist goes from 25 to 52 and a half inches and the hips 34 and a half to 62 and a half inches. So a pretty good size range. Uh, like most French Navy patterns, it, it, they have really good instructions and give you some good tips about making the top. And I made a straight size B. I did shorten it by one inch. It says it's patterned for someone who's about 5'7 and has a B cup size. I did want it to be slightly cropped, so I took one inch from the length. 
and it is you can see it's just comes to the bottom of this waistband now I think I could have just done it without shortening and it would be fine because sometimes I like to tuck in the front and this one is really not long enough to tuck so when I make it again I think I will if it's for summer the short sleeve version I'm not going to shorten it and if I make a long sleeve version which I plan uh, I'm going to probably add a few inches uh, because I don't want any drafts coming up in the winter when it, the air's cold and I'll, then I can tuck it so uh, probably if you're very tall and you want to tuck the shirt you're going to have to add some inches to it now this was a pretty easy sew the sleeves um, they're not set in sleeves you add the sleeve in before you stitch up the sides and then you once you have the sleeve in then you're going to go from the end of the sleeve all the way down to to the hem on the bottom I made the neckband uh, exactly the length that it was in the pattern um, and I think at first I thought it was going to be too small and actually the first one that I cut out was too small because when I was taping all the pieces together I think I was doing it at night and there was a line that I thought at the end was the end of the piece but it really extended to the next page so it was making it like an inch or so too short uh, but then I went back and checked it and I realized I hadn't cut out the whole neckband so once I did that it worked fine it fits pretty snugly around the neck when I made mine I used the green solid for the side pieces and the neckband uh, I didn't really want it I didn't want the sleeves to be the green I wanted the daisy print to go all the way across my shoulders but I felt like it needed a little bit more green just to be more visually balanced uh, so I decided to add little bands to the ends of the sleeves but they're not in the pattern but what I did was I just took the neck band uh, piece and I measured around the sleeve the finished sleeve opening and then I subtracted one inch from the circumference of the sleeve then I made my band that length plus I, I added enough for a fourth inch seam allowance and I think it turned out well it brought in the sleeve just a little bit uh, like I wanted to I didn't want it to uh, be the same exact width of the sleeve I wanted it to cup a little bit but I didn't want it all gathered up and be too tight so I really like how the bands turned out and I just think it makes the tee even cuter. So that's the Teretha Tee by French Navy Patterns. And the last garment I'm going to talk about today is the one that's on my dress form. This is Simplicity 9467. It has two different lengths. This shorter length and a longer length. I think the links are kind of deceiving because uh, I thought the longer links were like tunic links but I think the longer length is actually what the model on the front is wearing and this is the shorter length is more cropped now I did not take any length off of this and when I wear it I can just barely tuck it a little bit the fabric I use from Spoonflower Fabrics is their cotton lawn again and the designer is I'm not sure how the designer's name is pronounced but it looks like Nina La Design and this is called Wild Grass Micro now this print is available in different uh, scales and this is a smaller one it's actually a watercolor that has been scanned and put into a software to upload it to Spoonflower. I think it's a really pretty print. I like all these kind of jewel toned colors. I did notice when I was looking at the website uh, earlier today that they also, she also has this same print with a black background. And I think that would be really cool and maybe a different type of fabric uh, for the fall and winter. 
This pattern comes in sizes 6 to 22 with a finished bust of 34 to 47 and a half inches. I made a straight size 8 with no lengthening in view D. Uh, there was nothing too fiddly about it. Uh, also, these buttons are from uh, Sewing Studio. They, I don't think they're real shells, but they are made to look like shells, and I thought they really looked well with the different colors in the shirt. A uh, band didn't require, you know, too much easing to put in. Of course, the gathers were simple. It has gathers in the back. I think it has a pretty back. So the gathers go all the way around to the back. Thought it, had, it doesn't have any slits on the sides. And the placket is just a fold over placket. It's not a separate um, pattern piece. So not too difficult of a sew. If I made it again, I would definitely do the longer length so that I could tuck it in because I, I'm not really someone who likes very voluminous shirts or dresses. I kind of want to have more of a fit, maybe a closer fit or a slightly relaxed fit, but not, not I don't like anything that like really puffs out. <laughs> So I'd probably do that and I think I will make one with a longer length and then I'll put in sleeves, probably not the long sleeves, they have pretty full sleeves. So I think I would stop the sleeves right above the elbow and maybe put in a little bit of elastic. I think that would be really pretty and I would probably keep the banded collar because I just tend to like banded collars more than um, stand-up collars. The only other thing that kind of bugged me about this shirt was the sleeve openings. Now, there is a little note on the first page, I think, of the instructions, and it could be easy to miss, but it says for the sleeveless version to trim this opening on the yokes before you sew it together. Uh, it says to trim it by a fourth of an inch, but I think it really needs trimmed more than that because they've allowed a 5 8 inch seam allowance and with the bias tape that it calls for it calls for a single fold wide bias tape the little area that you stitch down on the bias tape is only like maybe two eighths so i think it need i would cut off more of a half an inch i think i would cut off a half an inch here because this kind of extends right here i think i think it would be more comfortable and look better if the sleeve came down, the opening came down here a little bit lower. Also on this uh, bias tape, and it may have just been the way I put it on, I may have stretched the bias tape and maybe I should have put it on a little looser, but it says to, you know, press it back and it says you can stop, and this is the wide bias tape, it says you can top stitch it along here, you know, like, that far or that you can just tack it down at the seams but when I tried to do a top stitch that wide it was causing it to pucker so what I did was just top stitched it about maybe three-fourths or half inch away I, I top stitched it just halfway across on this bias tape and then I went ahead and tacked the edges down on the top seam and the bottom seam now maybe if you were making your own bias tape from the fabric, maybe it would stretch a little more and uh, do better. But I think it would do better if you did trim out this seam a little bit more than it says. But all in all, I think it turned out really well. And the cotton line is very comfortable for the hot summer month. Well, that's all the garments that I'm going to go over this week. I have some more that I've made from Spoonflower Fabrics, but I don't want this video to be too long. So I'm going to wait till next week to go over the remaining garments. If you have any questions about these, please feel free to leave those questions in the comments. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to do so. And thank you so much for everyone who left me some nice comments last week. I really enjoyed reading those and getting back with you. So until I see you in the next video, I hope you have a wonderful week.